My mom is engaged to a guy named George, and they want their wedding to symbolize the creation of a new family unit with me, teen female, and mom and George and his three kids, age pre-tween, young grammar schooler, and kindergartner. George's ex-wife dipped and has not seen her kids since the youngest was born. My dad died four years ago. Mom and George have been together for three years and we've lived together for seven months now. Mom, George and George's kids are happier and my mom is happier than she ever was, something she's said. I don't think she and my dad were happily married when he died. Anyway, like I said, they want to celebrate the family unit they're creating and talk about how great it is, how we're all so happy with it and feel like we've become such a solid unit. My mom and George wrote this speech for me to give at the wedding in a few months and they wanted me to read it. They said they took care of writing it because they could put words together better. I read the whole thing and I couldn't imagine myself reading it. Some of the quotes from the speech are, I'm so happy our family is finally whole and legally recognized. I wouldn't change a thing about my life because it brought us all here. Our family is the best thing to happen to me. I cannot imagine life being any better than it is right now, standing here among the people I love most in the world. This is the start of the best chapter of our lives. I'm so excited to welcome my new dad and siblings into the last name family. Those are just the ones I kept notes of, but generally the tone of the speech is not how I feel. I would change all of this in a heartbeat for my dad back. This will never be my best chapter when he's not here and I don't love George or his kids. I don't have strong feelings either way, but I'm also sad. The wedding and enthusiasm remind me I no longer have my dad to confide in. My mom is happy and I'm glad about that. I would give a speech about that, but I know the second I say that, my mom would want us in family therapy and I don't want to go with them. I don't like to hear that embracing and being happy about a new dad and siblings after 15 years of being an only child is okay. Instead, I told mom I wasn't comfortable giving the speech they wrote and that I wouldn't do it. She told me the speech was perfect and was a beautiful tribute to what was happening. She also told me how much it would mean to George's kids. I told her I still didn't feel comfortable and to forget about me saying anything. My mom was upset and mad. George was asking why I'd refuse to do something that would make everyone so happy. They told me I was acting like an elementary school kid instead of a teenager who was a young adult. They also had George's oldest tell me how excited she and her brothers are to hear my speech, and she told me she's excited to be my sister. Am I the idiot? Also, the speech is three pages long. Not the idiot. I'd say, here are some words that my mom and George insisted I read and this is not how I feel. Then give the speech in the most monotone voice possible. Let them think they won and make them regret it. Ah yes, malicious compliance. Do it. They're trying to present a vision of what they want the world to see, not reality. The fact they didn't write the speech with you or trust you to write it yourself shows that they know how you feel. Stick to your guns no matter what they throw at you. No, Opie's just a mid-teen and has to live with these people. Don't encourage her to be a petulant teen, it will only hurt her. Malicious compliance will not serve the OP in the long run. All it will do is make her come across as a defensive, petulant child, which is the opposite of what she needs, and drive a wedge between the OP and her last surviving parent. I'm not saying comply, either. She can stand her ground without being a jerk, which involves calmly but firmly communicating not yelling or stomping or raging. OP, while I get the appeal of some petty revenge-type advice, there is better advice. Is there another adult in your life, an aunt or uncle or grandparent, that can support you here and talk some sense into dear old mom and George? I think another obvious solution is that whoever wrote the speech should read it. Simple as that. So I, teen female, am named after my grandma Nancy, my mom's mom. There's a bit of a tradition in my family to name the first grandkid of each gender after one of the grandparents of the same sex. I was the first girl. My mom wanted to follow the tradition and dad didn't, so I was named after mom's mom. My dad chose my middle name, Sky. Ever since I was in kindergarten, I've used the name Sky instead of Nancy. My family called me Nancy for years anyway, but eventually everyone else would ask for Sky when they wanted me. My teachers called me Sky. My friends, my friends' parents, our neighbours, our doctor, everyone. So my family started calling me Sky too, and sometimes Nancy would slip in, but I never used it. My mom and grandma were the people most upset. 
grandma because she felt like she didn't get her grandchild named after her since it was never used, and my mom because she wanted the tradition too. But also, she doesn't like Sky and only said yes to it as my middle name because dad didn't like Nancy and she didn't want to be unfair. I've toyed with changing my name when I turn 18, but I feel like that would be a mess. Since Christmas, my mom, grandma and some other family members on my mom's side have suggested I use Nancy again. Grandma told me it would mean a lot to her and she said I'm getting to an age where the name doesn't seem so bad or old. My mom told me Sky isn't a name I should be using in my adult life and she said Nancy will sound so much better. She also told me it's my real name, and it would be a pain to use a name that isn't my legal first name as an adult. Other family members said I should do it to make my grandma happy. Or should I do it because it seems like I'm rejecting my mom, which is weird to me? My mom and grandma sat me down last Wednesday, told me it means so much to them, and pleaded with me to go by Nancy. They said I've used Sky for 11 years now, and isn't it time to grow up a little and use my real name and use the family name? Mom told me it's embarrassing because some of her friends have asked why I hate grandma or my name so bad that I use my middle name like it's my name. I told them I didn't want to be Nancy and would not start using it instead of Sky. I told them that I'm Sky and that might not be easy for them, but it's what I prefer and I'm the one living with the name. I'm the person who has to introduce myself. My dad is on my side and has tried to get mom to back off but she has been really unhappy since Wednesday and has been a little hostile since my refusal. Am I the idiot? Mom told me it's embarrassing because some of her friends have asked why I hate grandma or my name. Oh, they didn't ask that. Or if they did, it was only because of your mom's prompting. Other people are simply not that invested in your family's drama. You are not the idiot. Yeah, no one asked her that. Mom is playing games with this. Listen, OP, Sky is your real name on your birth certificate. It's your middle name, yes, but it's still your name, and you can go about your life and in school and get a job and everyone can call you Sky. It would be nice if you would let your grandma call you Nancy, if you really wanted to. But if they get too annoying, you can go to court and legally drop the Nancy part from your name. Not the idiot. Both my husband and I use our middle name as our first name, and it's fine. And we also know when a telemarketer is on the phone because they ask for our first name, a sure sign they've never even met us. Also, I'd be curious, maybe when you're bonding alone with your mom, ask her in confidence whether she ever really wanted to name you Nancy in the first place. She may be defending a tradition precisely because she was forced into it. Good luck. I, 28 female, love to bake, and I will often make cakes and stuff for friends, and since I met my in-laws in 2018 for them as well. My sister-in-law asked me to bake her daughter's birthday cake for her birthday this weekend. This was back in October, and we discussed what she wanted in detail. It's not my first time making her cakes, but it is my first time as her sister-in-law officially, and where I felt like I was truly part of a family. Three days ago, I was out grocery shopping, and I ran into a family friend of my in-laws. This person is not someone I like very much. She's a horrible gossip and seems to have some malice while sharing gossip about others. I try to be polite to everyone and normally I don't talk to her, but she stopped me and went out of her way to ask me when my husband and I were having kids. Then she mentioned me being a foster kid and an affair baby and she did it in a way that was meant to come across as actual concern but was her being intrusive and cruel. She mentioned that my in-laws and sister-in-law were concerned about our kids not having anyone. I told my husband when he got home from work and I was a mess. It might seem dumb but I felt like his family betrayed the trust I put in them and they did the one thing they were asked not to do, which was tell people about my history. It's not something I want to broadcast to everyone who knows me. My husband confronted his parents and sister, and they said they only mentioned it to a few close circle people, and they defended it when my husband said that wasn't okay. Sister-in-law said that it's not like people wouldn't find out eventually, and he asked her how they would find out if we never told them. My history is that both my parents were married to others, and had children with their other spouses when they had an affair. I was the result. Both sets of first children were technically adults or close to it when I was born. The day before my fifth birthday, we were in the car together and it crashed. Nobody in either of my parents' families wanted me and I was brought up in foster care for the rest of my life. I never found a family. After hearing sister-in-law say what she did and realizing how unapologetic they were and hearing how little they cared about what they did to me, I asked if I could speak to sister-in-law for a second and told her not to expect a cake from me 
after going against what I wanted and having such little care for the harm it caused. She went crazy and said it was only three days until the birthday party, and my husband backed me up and said, so what? She and their parents were blowing up his phone so badly that he had to block them, and I worry that I'm a bit of an idiot saying no with such short notice. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. They treated you like family to your face and were willing to have you bake cakes for them, but they could not help but share your personal backstory with others after being told explicitly not to. It's a massive violation of trust, and I'm very happy to hear that your husband is backing you up and setting a boundary with his family. I'm also very sorry to hear that you're going through this. It must be heartbreaking. You know the old saying, two can keep a secret if one is dead. If you tell even one other person, you probably tell ten of them. In-laws can easily order a grocery cake with her name in icing with as little as two days' notice. I've done it before. If they aren't organized enough for that, they can get a generic grocery cake with one day's notice. The whole bunch of in-laws sounds terrible. They honestly expect you to respond to their cruelty with kindness. That's messed up. Go low or no contact with those trolls. Agreed. Family is what you make of it. Your husband is a rock star and he's just proven how much he cares about you. The bad place would freeze over and the sky would turn purple before I trusted my in-laws again. Sister-in-law betrayed you in the worst possible way. I'm so sorry. Honestly, my words are insufficient. I wish I could hug you, OP. Kudos for your husband to take your side and defend your honor. He should be the one to get that cake instead. I have a significant income and expect it to grow more in the coming years. My investments will also mature, making me reasonably wealthy. I'm emphasizing this to highlight that in the event of a divorce, I have a lot to lose. I've told my fiancé several times that I won't marry without protection or guarantee for my financial future. He agreed then, but now I think he just said what he needed to convince me to accept the marriage. He probably didn't think I was serious, but I certainly was. I discussed this with my lawyer, who drafted an excellent prenuptial agreement based on my concerns. She even suggested adding an infidelity clause, something I hadn't thought of but readily accepted. I discussed this with my fiancé and told him to review the agreement with his lawyer to see if we could reach mutually acceptable terms. He was very offended that I even felt the need for one. To say he got upset would be an understatement. He was particularly offended by the infidelity clause. I certainly didn't expect this reaction from him. However, in the end, he agreed and signed. His reaction is making me have doubts. Before signing, he claimed that I wasn't respecting our relationship and expecting him to fail which is not true. However, life is unpredictable and anything can happen at any time, so I'm just trying to protect my financial future in case of a divorce. I'm starting to question everything after his hesitation, especially regarding the infidelity clause. Am I wrong in this? Not the idiot. This is bizarre to me. A prenup is like insurance to protect the assets you had before the relationship. Would you not buy fire insurance because you never plan on having a fire? The prenup is an insurance you hope never to need, but are glad to have if you do. I learned the hard way. The person you marry is not the same person you divorce. I didn't have many assets, but I had my bills paid on time and savings in the bank. He wiped me out and took everything that wasn't nailed down. I left with the clothes on my back and a few things he didn't want that weren't worth monetary value, like our wedding album. He, on the other hand, came into the relationship with tens of thousands of dollars of debt. He borrowed money he didn't ask or even consult me about to keep up with the Joneses, tanked my credit, and then expected me to help him pay off his debts, after taking everything that could be sold. And then he cut contact when my lawyer mentioned child support. He lived in another country, so while I couldn't be forced to pay for his debts, neither could his check be garnished for child support. OP, you need to understand this. People change, and so can their dedication to a relationship. You should stick with the prenuptial agreement. If fiancé can't accept it, oh well for him. I, 27 female, got into a fight with my roommate, 24 female, and I'm not sure if I'm in the wrong here. Two weeks ago, I decided to cut back on junk food and fast food and start losing weight. It became our habit for her to invite friends over on Saturdays and order pizza. For the second week in a row, I said no when she asked why. I keep things to myself for the most part, so she wasn't aware of it, so I told her that I was trying to lose weight and get healthy. She said I was skinny and didn't need to lose weight. I said I was fat and owning up to that. 
Then she got mad, looked like she was about to cry, and asked, What am I then? I just told her that her body is her prerogative and not mine to comment on, and that if she was happy with herself, that's all that mattered. Generic response, really, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't mean to offend anyone or attack her size. I don't care what other people do with their bodies or judge anyone on their size. I'd understand her annoyance and offense to what I said if I was skinny and calling myself fat in front of her, but I'm not. Part of losing weight to me is owning up to size and not sugarcoating it with words like chubby or plus-sized. So, am I the idiot? What am I then? Brenda, you're fatter. As a fellow fat person, you're not the idiot, and your roommate needs to stop acting like everything you do for your health is about her. She's not the main character in your life. You were speaking about yourself and your own health needs. Yeah, what the heck are people saying? Because you're smaller, you shouldn't use the word fat. Who can use the word fat then? Because there's always someone fatter. If someone is talking about oneself, stop making it about you. I don't care about the weight of others, I'm not them. I only care about retaining a good quality of life and not ending up with my joints packing up at a young age. OP, you did nothing wrong. That girl triggered herself.